What's up, guys? This is Sheldon again. Welcome back to LSE Tutorials. Today, we will talk about something related to the memory management. So the keyword will be memory leak. So don't panic, even if you are a beginner, because today I will give you guys a very good explanation on the memory management using Swift, as well as the visualization tool given by Xcode starting from the version 8.0 that we can visualize the memory leak in our application. So let's get started. So here we are at the Xcode. So before we start in write some code, first we need to understand what is memory leak. So this memory leak is not just a fancy word. Actually, is when we store or create something into our memory, and if we don't release it properly, that variable or whatever property that you created there will hang in in the memory because we are assuming we didn't release it properly or we even forget to release it. I mean, this happens a lot when we're at the MRC generation, which is before iOS 5. And at that moment, we only use MRC, which is manual reference counting. Um, so in that case, we have to release the objects that we created uh, step by step. But nowadays, since iOS is taking ARC, which is automatic call or automatically reference counting mechanism, um, so when we create an object out of a class, uh, iOS will help us to release it. So nowadays, we don't need to care much about this memory issue until in the following two cases. So again, memory leak is just when we create something in the memory and we didn't release it properly. So in that case, that object is always hanging there in our RAM and taking resources. And that's why we call it a leak. So I will show you guys two things, as you guys may see here. I mean, I have prepared two classes that we will use to demonstrate these two memory leak scenarios. So the first one is very classic return cycle example. So we are having a class called person. It is very easy to understand we will have a variable called name which is just a simple string and we can also invoke I mean create a property called friend so this friend will be a friend of the current class person and of course your a friend of you it should be the same type the type of this friend is also a person because we are assuming sometime you have a friend sometime you don't um, so we're having this friend defined as optional. As you can see, we have question mark here. So we have to create an init function. Uh, we're going to only init with name. And also, as you can see, we write this de init function inside of which there is only one line of code, which is print. This guy is released. So in the view did load, let's create one person called person A. The person A is an instance of the class person that we created here. So this class has this init function init with name. That's why when you type this open parent, this guy comes automatically. So let's call late A. And now if we run our project, can you guys guess if this will be printed or not? Yes, so it will be printed because we are creating a local variable and a view did load. So the, the moment we are invoking view did load, is starting from line 13 to 18, it first comes to this 14, line 14, which is super view did load, and then to this line 16. And after line 18, this person A will be released. And at that moment, this function will be invoked. So let's quickly run our project to see if this is happening. All right. So once we finish running our project, you guys can see optional A is released because um, 
because we are having an optional name string here after we add an exclamation mark this optional will be gone so as we expected the personal the person a is released let's quickly define two more persons with c so if we now run our project of course it will show a is released b is released and c is released so now i'm going to show you the interesting thing which is let's define the friend so person a dot friend we are making it to person b so person b dot friend we're making it person c person c dot friend let's make it as person a so we're kind of creating a circle here if we now run our project what will happen as you get you guys can see now although we are running our project the view the load is already finished but nothing is released so um, in this case we're having a memory leak so the visualization tool that I have told you guys in the beginning of this video is here when the console is shown you have this toolbar here right so you can just simply like left click it this is a visualization tool is available in Xcode 8 that can show you the return cycle um, in your project okay so if you connect to uh, I mean if you click to this point I mean we can see the view controller here if there is a straight line arrow or one one side arrow that means there is no memory leak but if you guys can see there is an exclamation mark here that means we have a leak and if you click the person here it shows all oh, person a is friend of b b is friend of c c and friend of a that creates a return cycle so this is like a, a classic situation of return cycle we can call it strong reference cycle as well in swift by default uh, when we create a let or var uh, for these variables will actually create a strong reference by default and uh, it means when you create a strong property it will claim the ownership of a memory address so what's the issue here when we create a person we are claiming a strong reference of the name here and a strong reference of a friend here uh, so we create one person a one person b and one person C. So when we try to release person A, person B, and person C, the friend of person A, which is person B, is actually stopping this friend to be released, which means the person B cannot be released because we have a strong reference here. I mean, this is kind of hard to describe, but the thing is when we create the object of person, it can be released. But when we try to release the friend, um, it, the pro the release process is got stopped because it is referencing another person um, that is holding the strong reference. So one way to solve this is simply add the weak keyword here. So the weak keyword uh, we call this attributes of a property in object to C, and now it's just a simply keyword. And if we run our project again we can see because we claim the weak reference uh, when we try to release the person object the rest is also automatically solved yes so as you guys can see everything is released okay so there's one more thing that is interesting uh, why C is released first can you guys guess yes because when we creating i mean local arrivals we are uh, creating on a stack so first we create person a and then we create person b and finally we create person c but when we release it because the c is on the top of the stack so we will try to release c first and then b second and uh, last but not least is a person a okay so that's we'll wrap up our first section of this classic strong reference cycle solution so when you 
uh, strongly referencing something, um, one way to solve that is simply use weak property attribute to redefine our variable. So uh, yeah, let's try to hit this um, visualization tool again. And as you can see, there's no exclamation mark for this so it's a sign uh, indicating we have a memory leak anymore. So the second class, this one is more interesting than the first one actually because this will involve a type of the property in Swift or in iOS, which is called block. So what is block? Um, block is just like when we define a block, usually in Swift, it can be easy as easy as this, right? So we are we are having a type. We can uh, return a result. We can write our completion handler using blocks, but in Swift, we can also make property as a type of block. Okay. So I take this class example from the official guide from Apple that has the topic of solving memory leaks. Um, I mean, that's actually this example is a perfect example and that's why I want to use this guy to explain to you guys like you may if our main purpose here is to uh, try to use this realization tool debug memory graph of Xcode. So according to the document, when we use a block actually we will automatically generate a strong reference of self which is strong reference of current class so uh, i will try to go through this class very quickly here for the html element class so inside of it we will have a name string which is not non-optional type the next line we're having a text so in this text we will generate another string. Actually, this tag will be the content in between the open tag and the close tag. We have a variable called as HTML. So in this variable, we are um, actually returning as a still as a string, and uh, we are using the tag. So the name will be the tag. You, you guys can see we have the open tag and close tag and in between we'll have the content. So uh, we also created one innate function called uh, that we have name and text as input and it is worth noting that the input of the text can be nil. Um, and also we have this the innate function to indicate this any element is released. Uh, let's create an element using HTML element, this innate function. So we're going to create name, which is tag name. Uh, for HTML, I remember for the underline, we can use U. And tags, we can use uh, underline here. Okay, so now we are creating HTML element called element that has name, tag name, and text. So what we're going to do is let's define a string, which is an element dot as HTML. So what will happen if we run our project? I mean, let's first print it. we can comment it out the first test part which is the I mean the person part we can take it out temporarily. So when we we run our project, oh actually this is a function. So although we're not writing a function uh, but actually it's a block type. So to use a block type uh, we have to make it um, looks like an instance of the block type. In that case, it will return this guy as we define a string there. Anyways, so 
if we check what the content we're printing is that we have a tag underline and we have a content in the middle called underline here so that's this function do but you may notice that why this d init this line is not released so i've already told you guys the clue is that any block type is strongly referencing the self which means if our current class is not released then this as HTML block will not be released so to solve this the first way is to force the self within the block to be weak which is very similar to what we have done here for the person but the thing is when you setting yourself to be weak what will happen you guys can see why this error is showing because sometimes the self can be nil okay so in this case we can add question mark or exclamation mark here to force unwrapping the nil options value well there is one problem if the self is nil this line will crash so we need to use if let um, something like if let weak self is equal to self and then we do the rest thing but the thing is actually if we know this self is always there we can use i own i mean i own is new type introduced from swift 2 i guess but the thing is when we use i own we're kind of sure of this self will not be nil in any case so that we don't need to make this self to be optional okay so if we run a project again you guys can see this problem is solved we will be printing the line that tag underline tag as well as the second line u is released so this will wrap up the second scenario of solving the strong re uh, reference cycles but before we actually solve it let's use our visualization tool to check it again okay so now we have this strong cycle again and as you, you guys can see here this exclamation mark sign is coming again if we click it oh you guys can see it's like strongly referencing itself right this guy because as i explained to you guys when we create a block actually it is strongly referencing to self which is the current html class all right guys feel free to check the apple document that talks about this i owned or weak self if you still have confusion there i hope this video find you guys some useful information and if you have any question regarding this memory leak or uh, memory management or even arc mrc whatever topics you have confusion you can leave comments as always i will although this code is very short i still will put this in github repository that i will post in the link down below in the video description so enjoy the rest of your day guys i will see you soon in next video tutorial